Hey guys, this is Andrew with RockClass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're going to be learning concept lesson number 10, or episode 10. And this episode is all about rhythmic variation. So what does that mean? Well, when we listened to the performance, the first time through the form, and the form is 16 bars in length, so the first time through that chord progression, it was very beginner friendly, just island strum predominantly throughout. But the second time around the form, it started to get a little bit more interesting. There was finger picking, there was chucking, there were interesting rhythms thrown in there, such as quarter note triplets and eighth note triplets, which were accomplished with a triplet strum. And we even changed the length of a couple bars. So we threw in a little bit of rubato, which means that we're kind of ignoring the strictly adhering to the tempo. So those bars became a little bit longer and they became more accented. So we're gonna talk about all of these concepts and this lesson I think is gonna be a big takeaway or a big breakthrough, this would be a better way to say it, a big breakthrough for the intermediate and up player because it teaches you concepts that you can throw into your rhythm playing. So for example, that Eagle song that you've played a hundred times before with the same island strum or simple strum pattern, you can go back to it, you can take the concepts you learned from this lesson, and it's literally like you're playing an entire new song. So it makes the rhythm parts more fun, makes it more filled sounding, sounds like you're really embellishing the harmony in your rhythm playing. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this lesson and then we'll jump into learning everything. So with this lesson, we're actually gonna learn everything in this YouTube video, but if you'd like to get the tabs to follow along with and print out as a PDF format, you can click this link right here or you can go to the site rockclass101.com and do a search for EP010. That's lesson number for this lesson. Now on that page, you'll also be able to access the on-screen tab viewer. Now this is a really cool feature where you can hit play, watch the tab scroll across in real time. You can highlight bars to loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a really great asset and learning this song that much easier. All right guys, so let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. There's a few things I wanna talk about before we actually dive into learning it. So the first thing is that this lesson is geared towards the intermediate and up player. So we're going to assume that you know quite a few things. For example, I assume that you know all these basic chords, A, D, and E. I also assume that you know island strum. And when I say that you know island strum, I mean you don't know it just as down, down, up, up, down, up, but you understand the rhythm behind it, which is one, two, end, and four, end. So if that's a new concept for you, I'm gonna put a link towards a lesson in the description box that teaches island strum and breaks down the rhythm behind it. Now, as we move throughout this lesson, we're going to be counting out rhythms and some of them get more complex. So if you need to brush up on any of your rhythmic notation, check out this lesson. Again, I'll put it in the description box below as well. And the last thing I wanna to mention too is that this whole song has a swung rhythm. So we're swinging the eighth notes. So again, I'll put a lesson in the description box below that shows you the difference between straight versus swung eighth notes. That lesson goes super in depth. So if you're new to that concept, check that one out too. Oh, and last but not least, this song is performed on a low G, but you can play it on a high G as well. A couple things may sound not as pretty as the low G, but the big takeaway is the rhythmic concept. So taking the concepts from this performance piece and applying it to the songs that you already know. So that's the big takeaway with this lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into it and we're gonna kick off with the bass rhythm. So it's an A to a D to an E. So that's gonna cover the first couple bars. So literally, we're just going to be playing the full chord shapes, A to D to E. I'd encourage you to, especially for the E, to tackle the four finger one. I think it's gonna be the cleanest way to play this. You can do a three string approach where you're playing third string down, but sometimes that G tends to ring open a little bit and sound a little muddy. And that G is not in an E chord. 
so it's going to sound awful. So if it's humming slightly in the background, it won't sound as pretty. So I'd encourage you to try to do the full shape, but if you want to make it easier, you can do third string down. So in bar one, we're just playing straight out of island strum. One, two, and, and four, and. Okay, so down, down, up, up, down, up. In bar two, we're going D to E. So half the bar is D, and then half the bar is E. And this is where our first little variation comes in. It's very simple. It's one, two, end, and then the same rhythm for the second half. Three, four, end. So you have quarter, eighth, quarter, eighth. So the first half is D, one, two, end. The second half is E, three, four, end. Okay, remember a good rule of thumb is if we have a downbeat, we strum down. If we have an upbeat, we strum up. So one is a down, two is a down, the end of two is an up strum. So you have down, down, up, and the same thing when you go to E. Down, down, up. Okay? So for bar two again, we have one, two, and three, four, end. Okay? So let's see if we can try bar one and two together. And here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Now the thing with this is that it's going to go three times in a row. So you're literally gonna play those same two bars again and again. So you have two, four, six. So you have six bars of the same little progression, okay? So let's go ahead and move on to the next part. So we're gonna be looking at bar seven now and bar eight, and that'll finish up the first half of this form. So bar seven, we're going to be hanging on the E. So we're just gonna hang on the E chord, and then we're going back to the A. And then for bar eight, we're hanging totally on the E. So let me show you what that sounds like. So bar seven is. Okay, so a little tricky because it's a quick change from E to A. So I'm gonna give you one little tip. But you hear that rhythm is still the variation. So it's one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, so very simple. Now here's a little trick when you have a really hard transition back and forth. When I'm on this E, for the end of two, I, I'm gonna play an open A, or I could play a muted up strum as my hand transitions, either or. Let me show you. So I have one, two, and three. Okay, so that open A, down, down, A strum. That open A just buys me more time to transition to the next chord. And it sounds good because A is obviously in the A chord. So down, down, up strum. Right? Or we could play it as a mute. Down, down, up strum. You can see that I'm just touching the strings while I transition, and it cleans up the playing. Because the thing is, if we try and catch one, two, and we try and catch this entire chord on the end of two, we have to quickly switch back to the A. It's just really hard to do all that and keep the timing going steady. So those are a couple ideas you can do just to clean up the playing, make it sound nice, and keep that rhythm going steady. Okay, so a mute or the open A. So let's try this seventh bar together. Three, four, down, down, up, down, down, up. Okay, and let's take a look at the eighth bar now. So our eighth bar, very simple. We are back to the island strum, and we're just hanging on E for the entire thing. One, two, and, and four, and. Okay, so let's try seven into eight. Three, four, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Awesome. So let's try the first eight bars now. Remember, the first two are repeated three times in a row. It gives us six bars. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and, and four, and down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, hang. E, A, E. Nice. So very simple so far. Let's look at the second half of this tune. So the second half of this form, 
We're staying with the island strum and we're going to be playing A to A7 to D to D minor. Okay, so basic A, that's gonna be the ninth bar, the 10th bar, A7, the 11th bar, D, the 12th bar, D minor. Okay, so let's give that a shot because it's all island strum. One, two, ready, go. Okay, very simple stuff. Now, some of the things you can do to jazz this up, even though this is the bass rhythm, you can put a little bit of dynamics. So when we go to this ninth bar, we can accent it that it's the second half of this tune. So we can accent the hit stronger. So for example, when I finish seven to eight, check it out, I'm gonna hit nine with more emphasis, just to signify that it's the start of the next half. Right, so you hear this, the, the difference there. So imagine this as an analogy of like a sentence. If I was talking to you like this for this sentence versus if I started like this and then went into this kind of way of talking, the second way was more interesting because it caught your attention more. So we can use something like that, like these dynamics, which are volume changes to help make even the bass rhythm sound more interesting. All right, so let's go ahead and look at bar 13. And here's where things get a little bit more challenging and our rhythm changes again. So challenging in that we have a full bar chord coming up. So let me go ahead and play 13 and I'll play 14 as well because it's the same uh, theme that's happening. Okay, so rhythmically simple quarter notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. It's very simple, but the chords are a little bit challenging, especially the second of this bar. So it starts with A, so we have two down strums, one, two, then we have this F sharp minor. All we're gonna do is take the ring, add it to the second fret of string two, and to finish this bar, we have two down strums. Okay, so let's try this bar together. So here we go, three, four, strum, 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 strum. Okay, after that, we're going to B minor. So we've got a bar chord right here. So lay flat on the second fret strings one, two, and three, add the ring to the fourth fret of string four. We strum all four strings. So we have two down strums. And then for the last chord, we can do that partial E. So instead of grabbing the fourth string with the middle finger, it's gonna be too hard of a transition right there. We can ignore string four, we can strum three down. Okay, so you have B minor, E. Okay, so let's try those two together. We have three, four, A, F sharp minor, B minor, E. And you see what I'm doing right there with my middle finger? I touched as if I was muting, so not, not pushing down, touching that G string to cut out that little hinge of G that drones out and sounds awful over the E. So the one you probably want to practice is just B to the E. Okay, so you can put that into a time frame. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You see the movement, three and four come down, then one drops down. All right, so let's see if we can tackle the last couple bars and that'll finish up the form for the bass rhythm. So the last two bars, 15 and 16, it's going to go A, D, A, E7. And we're back to that variation. So one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, so the first of these bars is A to D. Okay, then the last bar, A to E7. Just the stock basic E7 chord. So let's see if we can try those two bars together. One, two, ready, go. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. Okay, now on the end of four right here, I like to play the open A instead 
because I think it gives me a nice little pickup before we jump into our rhythmic variation form. So that's just one thing I want to point out. So if we look at that last bar 16, down, down, up, down, down, A. So I'm just playing an open A for the last hit. Okay, so let's see if we can go back. Let's try the last four bars. So 13, 14, 15, 16. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, A. Okay, let's backtrack. Let's try nine through 16. One, two, ready, go. Awesome. So that's everything for our bass rhythm, guys. So the big takeaway is that we understand the form, the chord progression, and we have something that is the bass to play over, right? So very simple rhythmically speaking, mainly island strum, a few little variations thrown in there with uh, the rhythm and simplifying it as well to quarter note rhythms. So just a few little variations thrown in there, but for the most part, very, very beginner friendly, although the chords are probably more of the intermediate level. All right, so now let's jump into the rhythmic variation. So it's the same chord progression over the same 16 bar form, but we're going to really be embellishing the harmony. We're gonna make it a little bit more interesting. So let's take a look at the first couple bars. So we know the first two bars repeat three times, giving us the first six bars of the tune. So here's what's happening for our rhythmic variation. I'm gonna go ahead and play through it and then break it down to show you guys. Finger picking. So with this, it's, there's one little part that's tricky in the second bar, but let's break the first bar down. It's not too hard. Let's go ahead and make the A chord, and we're playing all eighth notes. Remember, we have that swung rhythmic feel throughout as well, so you want to swing those eighth notes. Okay, and that's what the first part sounds like, so let's break it down. So our picking pattern is going to be three, two, four, one, two, three, one. So the end of two is going to get held out for a quarter. One and two and three and four, and. So that's that fourth hit. So if I call out strings, I have three, two, four, one, two, three, one. So you can hear that gets held out and lingers for a quarter, so twice as long as the other notes. One, and two, and three, and four, and. So if I call out strings, I've got three, two, four, one, two, three, one. Okay, so let's try that together. One, two, Ready, slow. Three, two, four, one, two, three, one. Okay, very simple for that. Now the second bar I said, it gets a little tricky. Let me play it and then we'll break it down. That's fast, let me play it slow. You hear a slide on beat two. We're gonna have a slide going up from the D to the E. That's the tricky part here. One and two and three and four, and. Slow, one and two and three and four, and. Even slower, one and two and three and four, and. So on beat two, we're sliding from two to four. And you can already notice that for this, I'm using just third string down for the chords. So we're not doing the full sh uh, four string chords like we did in the A, I'm sorry, in the bass rhythm. So for these chords, we just wanna use second and third, second, third, and index, okay? So let's start this one slow and break it down. So our first two hits are gonna be string three, string two, and then our third hit's gonna be our slide. So we're gonna slide up from two to four. And we slide up with the ring finger as well because we wanna get into the E shape. Okay, so you see how that ring stayed as well. So when this slides up, even though I'm plucking only that third string, 
my ring goes up with it and then my index will come down to finish and complete that E chord. So I'm going, calling out strings, three, two, slide, and then string one. Three, two, three, one. Okay, so slow, three, two, three, one. And then I hold that out again, so the end of two, I hold out for a quarter, then I'm gonna play two, three, one. Okay, so together I have three, two, three, one, two, three, one. Three, two, slide, one, two, three, one. Rhythmically, one and two and three and four and. So that bar is gonna be the one that I would recommend to practice quite a bit because it's really tricky with that slide up as well. So let's see if we can try that one together nice and slow. Three and four and one and two and three and four and. And again, three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, if we backtrack the first couple bars together, three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, now don't forget that's gonna go three times in a row. So those two bars become four bars, become six bars. So let's see if we can try that all together. And here we go. One, two, ready, go. Okay, so one thing I actually want to point out was that sometimes, again, kind of like we pointed out earlier, where we played the open A when we finished the E, the end of four for the E chord, we played that open A to help us transition. You heard that in one of the times through, and I think I played it all the way through. I'm not sure. I was thinking about that when I played it. But check this out. If I play the E, sorry, the second bar, D to E. That helps me transition even easier. Easier. You can even accent that opening. Okay, and if I don't play it, then I get this. So just a short little blop of the B note. So up to you guys on if you want to play that open A on the end of four in that second bar, but you definitely do want to play the B note for the sixth bar. So when you get to the third time around, you want to play that B note because it's going to be needed before we go into the seventh bar. So let me play five, six, seven, eight. You can hear, I'll give you a little head accent. We need that B melody note. So we definitely need that double B. We don't want... Sounds a little weird. Okay, so on the sixth bar, definitely play the B note for the end of four. All right, so let's try this again. Let's do these six bars with the A on two and four, but the B on six. Okay, here we go. One, two, ready, go. Okay, awesome. So let's take a look at seven and eight. So seven is going to start out of the E, so staying on the E and jumping back to the A. But when we jump to the A, I'm going to use my middle finger, so check it out. Okay, so that's going to be the easiest way to transition. So we're starting with, and I'll call it strings, one, two, three, and then I'm going to lift up, play the open A. I'm also going to lift up my ring finger, and I'm going to slide down to the first fret of the third string. And then I'm gonna play 
two, three. And then I'm gonna slide back up to the E because remember the eighth bar, we're going back to the E. So then we're gonna add the index finger and that ring finger back down. Now that rhythm carries the same as before where we have one and two and, and that end of two last a quarter note. One and two and three and four. But here's the key. When we get to that end of two, that open A will buy us time to move down. So that's when the transition needs to happen. One and two and three. Okay? One and two and three and four. Okay? So you probably want to practice just that. So let's see if we can do it together. Three and four and one and two and. Awesome. Again, three and four and one and two and. Okay. And let's see if we can finish that bar. So remember, end, four, end. So you got to slide back up. So end, four, end. So tricky. So together you have one and two and three and four, end. Okay, so right after you play that first fret, back up and grab the B note on the A string. So together, three and four and one and two and three and four, end. So quick, four, end. All right, so again, together, three and four and one and two and three and four, end. Okay, now the eighth bar, stay on the E, and two and three and four, end. So same rhythms for the most part, but the one difference here is the end of four, so that B note that we just played is gonna get tied into the first beat of the eighth bar. So we're holding out end one. So the first hit of this eighth bar is on the end of two. So we're playing string two, string three, and then to string one. That gets held out again into beat three, and then we're finishing up with two, three, open A. So you have hold for the first beat, two, three, one, last a quarter note, two, three, one, but the open A for the last hit because we're going into the A chord. So again, that same concept, the A buys us time to switch to the A chord. So let's see if we can try just the eighth bar. Remember, we're holding into beat one. So we're starting the end of one, three and four and one and two, and three, and four, and. So if I call out strings, three, and four, and one. Two, three, one, two, three, open. Okay, and seven and eight together, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. And if we call out strings, seven, eight, three, and four, and one, two, three, one. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, open A. That was two bars. Those are probably the ones that I would focus the most on, as well as that slide that was in the second bar. So let's see if we can try all eight bars together. And we'll go a bit slower. So here we go. Three and four and... All right, so let's look at the second half now, and we're gonna be incorporating chucking into the rhythmic fill right now. So for A and A7, so bar nine and 10, we have chucking. And if you're new to chucking, I do it a specific way with a claw shape that comes up with a pluck. So if you're new to the way that I do it, check out this lesson. It's gonna talk about the mechanics behind my technique in complete detail. So check that out and then come on back if you're new to the way that I do it. So. Let me play these, uh, let me play just the ninth bar and we'll break it down and learn it. Okay, so we have strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck. Okay, and again, that's all taught in that lesson that I, I linked earlier. Same concept, same rhythmic hits. One, two, and three, and four, and. So what do you notice? 
it's the island strum rhythm pattern, right? But it's more cool. It's more interesting because we have percussive hits on beat two and four. Okay, but the rhythm's the same. One, two, and three, and four, and. So same rhythm, but we're just incorporating chucking. So we're gonna start with the A, we're gonna strum down, do a slap on beat two, come up and pluck on the end of two, hold into beat three, and then we're gonna play the open A on the end of three. So with my attack, I like to use the nail of my thumb to come up for these uh, up strums. Okay, but if you're used to doing full strums coming up with the thumb, that works as well for this part. So you could have down, slap, pluck, full bar, full chord strum for the end of th three. Up to you, but my playing style, I tend to hit just the first string. Okay, so again I have strum, slap, pluck, one. Then I'm gonna come down again, slap on beat four, and pluck on the end of four. Okay, so together I have strum, slap, pluck, one, slap, pluck. Rhythm-wise, one, two, and three, and four, and. After that, the next bar, just go to the A7, so just add the ring to the third fret of string two, and we do the same thing. So let's try those two bars together. Three, four, strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck, strum, slap, pluck, one slap, pluck. Okay? So if any of this is too fast to you, by the way, you can use these uh, instructions on the YouTube player to slow it down, uh, and that, you know, that gives you 75, 50%. But again, one of the premium member assets is the on-screen tab viewer, so you can incrementally set it to whatever speed. Really, really great asset for practicing. So let's take a look at the next two bars, D to D minor, because here something really different happens, rhythmically speaking, but also incorporating rubato. So what is rubato? Rubato basically means that we don't have to strictly adhere to the tempo of the song. So the tempo of the song is about 150. So in this next section, I'm gonna drop the tempo by about 20 BPM, which is a pretty significant change. And I'm doing this because I really want to accent the rhythm change here, which is going to be quarter note triplets. So let me do this. Let me play 9, 10, 11, 12, and then into 13 and 14. And you can hear 9, 10, 13, 14 are at that 150, the quicker tempo, but 11, 12 will be at a slower tempo. So here's a little bit of what it sounds like. This gives you context. Okay, so you can hear that we started at the regular tempo, 150 or so. Start to slow. A little faster and back to regular speed. Okay, so that is just to really accent. It's really cool to throw in a little bit of rubato because it makes the piece really stand out. Now here's the thing with that though. If you're playing with a band and they don't know you're gonna do that, then you'll be completely off time. So it's something that you've gotta communicate. If you're playing in a duo, trio, or a band, then you need to communicate, hey, this we want to accent. We're gonna do slower tempo. We're gonna slow down in this section. Or else if you don't communicate that, then like I said, you'll be completely left behind everybody else. So it just gives it a cool effect. You know, th songs use tempo changes like that to great effect. One that comes to mind, and we actually did a lesson on it, I'll link it right here. We didn't do the tempo changes in this song, we kept it really straight, but it's uh, In the Hole of the Mountain King, which sounds like this. But when you listen to that song, if you listen to orchestra, the next time when they play it and they go higher up in, in the uh, harmony, they'll go da 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 da
then again, la 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 la. You can hear each time they keep playing it. They increase the speed, so it's a really cool effect. And we're doing the opposite. We're not increasing the speed here, we're decreasing the speed. But it's the same concept. So there are a lot of songs that are like that, that use this to great effect. So it's a really cool technique that you can throw on. You wanna do it sparingly too, because if you do it all the time, like a couple bars normal, one bar here off, a couple bars normal, one bar off, then it's, there's no timing concept. And it starts to sound like they're, you're just playing loosely based. So it's not something you wanna do a lot of. Uh, but let's take a look at what's happening in this section. So go ahead and make the basic D, and we have a quarter note triplet. So basically, if you think of half of the bar, so beats one and two, we're gonna be playing three notes for those two beats, okay? And then again, it's gonna happen for the second half. So in all, your, to your total is six hits for the entire measure. So one, two, three, one, two, three. That'll last the entire bar. So the first half, beats one and two, will be one, two, three. So I'm just gonna go down, up, down, down, up, down. And for this part, I can accent as well. I can hit the first one, two, three, one, two, three. I can hit one with more oomph to give it a little bit of a interesting dynamic characteristic. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three. And if we think of it as a context, if I play bar 9, 10, into 11. You can hear how I greatly slowed down, okay? So let's try that. Let's try 9, 10, into 11. 3, 4. Okay, so it's really all to fill for this part. Now when we get into the next bar, D minor, uh, we're going to kind of increase it a little bit, but not up to 150 again. So if you're following with tab, I put it about 15 beats faster. So if we drop to about 130, if we drop 20 for the D, we're gaining 15 for the D minor over the entirety of the D minor. back into tempo for the remainder of the piece. So check out the context of this again. Okay, so slow for the D, a little bit quicker for D minor, and then back to normal. Okay, so for D minor what's happening is we're going to be playing strum, two, three, and then we're going to add an extra note into this chord. So we're gonna add this B note into the chord. So you're gonna take your pinky and play the second fret of string one. So you've got strum, two, three, second fret of string one. That's gonna get held out into beat three. Lift that up, play the open A, come down with a slap, and then play an A again. So together you have strum two three B and hold it out A slap A. Okay, if I count out the rhythm slowly, I have one and two and three and four and. Okay, so again, strum two three one O slap O. Okay, so let's see if we can try that bar. You and I three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay, if we backtrack, so we try D to D minor, we have So you can hear a clear difference. D is a lot slower, D minor is a bit faster. Then we get to the next bar, we're back to regular tempo. So let's try D slower, D minor a bit faster. One, two, ready, go. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay, the big takeaway here though is this is really all to feel. So, you know, take it and make it your own as well. So you don't have to do it exactly like I do. Uh, feel free to throw in a little bit of poetic license. All right, so before we go on to the last four bars, let's go ahead and recap. Let's try those four together. So nine, 10, 11, 12. One, two, ready, go.
okay? So for 13, 14, 15, and 16, 13 and 14, they're actually really simple. The difference we're going to do here is we're going to do plucked staccato. Remember, staccato is basically cutting a note short, so we don't want to sustain the note for the duration. So we're still going to be playing quarter notes for these two bars, but we're going to do it with staccato. So ba, ba, right? So we don't want da, da, we want ba, ba. So when I do the staccato, I lift up. If it's a fretted note, I lift up as if it was a mute, and that cuts the note short. But if it's not a fretted note, like for this A chord, those two strings, second and first, they're open, then I'm gonna use the palm of my right hand to touch the strings after I pluck them to mute them. So I have pluck, mute, pluck, mute, pluck, mute, right? Pluck, mute, pluck, mute. Hard to say <laughs> that fast, but that's the basic concept, but you can watch the fretted notes will be lifting up, touching, and muting, also using the right hand to further mute. So the palm of the right hand. So try that a couple times with just the A chord. So pluck, mute, pluck, mute. Okay? So the same concept will carry for those two bars. So you have A, F sharp minor, and then for B minor, and E minor. Okay, so together you have one, two, three, four, one, these are a really cool sound, right? So we don't have to change things up tremendously from what we did in the bass rhythm, but doing this simple little thing, staccato plucked chords, give it a really cool feel. So again, the key concept here is a fretted note, you lift up and mute with the left hand, but again, the right hand palm touches the strings and gives really the most mute control. Okay? So let's see if we can try those two bars together. Three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Awesome. So now let's take a look at the last couple bars of the tune. So for this 15th bar, we're going to be doing a raschiato strum, which is a four finger barrel strum. And that's gonna give us a big sound for the A. Okay, so if you're new to this technique, in a nutshell, it's basically going pinky, ring, middle, index, all in rapid succession. So if you're new to that technique, we actually broke down the mechanics behind it in La Gitanita, and I'll put the link in the description box below in case I'm running out of little cards. But it's spelled G-I-T-A-N-I-T-A, -I -A, La Gitanita, but pronounced Hitanita. So that will teach you the mechanics behind the barrel roll strum, the Roschiato strum, so if you're new to that. So we're going to do the Roschiato strum for A, come up and play uh, just the open A after it, so down up, then we're gonna slap, and we're gonna pluck the D. So we're combining Roschiato into chucking. Okay, so we have A, D, Okay, so that bar, let's break it down in more detail. So we have one and slap, pluck, hold into bar beat three, come up, play the open A, come down and slap, and hit the A again. Okay, remember if you come up with the up strums and you hit all the chord, that's fine as well. Just my playing style, I like to come up and hit just the first string. So I've got raschiato, come up on one, slap, pluck on the end of two, hold into beat three, come up, on the end of three and hit the open A, come down again and slap, and then again and open A. So together you have one and two and three and four and. So you notice the rhythm is island strum. One and two and and four and. One and two and and four and. So nothing complex happening there, just the island strum rhythm, but a little tricky with this chucking in the raschiato. So raschiato on one, slapping on two and four. So we have one and two and three and four and. So I got strum one slap pluck, one slap. And then I can even pluck that chord as well or just come up and hit the one. It doesn't really matter as long as you fill that bar up. Okay, so again, rascato one slap pluck, one slap pluck. Okay, so let's try that bar together. Three, four, one and two and three and four and. 
All right, so the last bar, we're gonna start with a little bit of a tricky thing. We have a triplet strum, eighth note triplet strum this time. So those three beats will occur over one quarter note. So if you're new to eighth note uh, triplet rhythm, I'll put a link uh, in the description box below that covers that, and I'll put a lesson that Jake Shimbukuro taught on triplet strum as well. So if you're new to the mechanics behind triplet strum, check out that lesson as well. But we're going to start with the triplet strum on the first beat, and here's what the last bar sounds like. Okay, so that's pretty fast, right? We have triplets. That all happens over the first beat. So that's all over the A chord. So I'm going strum, open, open, triplet. So with my little technique, I'm going down with the middle and index, up with the thumb, the no, and then again, catching the last A with a regular puck of the middle finger. Triple it, triple it. I'm gonna slap on beat two, switch over to the E7, pluck it, come up, play string one, come down again, slap, and then play the open A. So I've got triple it, slap, pluck, one slap, A. And that will take me back into the first bar of the rhythmic variation. Okay, so really tricky on this one because we have a quick triplet strum. All right, so let's see if we can try that one together. Three and four and triplet slap pluck, one slap O. Oh. Okay, so real tricky, right? Triplet slap pluck, one slap O. Oh. If we backtrack, let's try seven into eight. Three, four. Okay, and let's try five through eight. So starting on the staccato. One, two, ready, go. Okay, and then let's try all of the second half together. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. So when you get to there and you go back into playing the rhythmic variation, you're going to play pretty much the first half, so those eight bars, but you're gonna start a little fade out, so check it out. So here I just started to gradually play lighter and lighter and lighter until it faded out. It's the same effect when you listen to your favorite tunes, a lot of them end with a fade out where the computer does it. But we could recreate that in real life. And it's a really cool effect, it's a cool way because most songs when you play together in a jam or, or by yourself always has an ending like that, you know, classic cadence, five, one. But to switch it up, we can add a little fade out. So you're going back into it, and you can incorporate it anywhere. You can do it early on, like I did in the third, fourth bar, or you can play through, you know, into bar seven and eight and add it there. But the con the concept is just to start playing normal volume level and just gradually pick lighter. You know, you can do it over a couple bars, one bar, three bars, four bars. You can have a long fade or a short fade. The concept is just to start to pick lighter until it's done. So that's a cool little way to end this tune. So guys, that covers everything for this lesson. And again, the, the key thing here is that these are all concepts that you can take and you can incorporate into any song that you play, that you know, that you're going to learn. Anytime you're playing rhythm, you can take these ideas and you can intertwine it into those songs and you can come up with something really cool as a rhythmic part. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Don't forget that if you do wanna get the tabs to 
print out and keep for your records and you want to access that really cool on-screen tab viewer, which may be over here, where you can interact with the tab player, watch it scroll across in real time, highlight bars, all these cool little features that make learning the song that much easier. All that is going to be at rockclass101.com. So you just want to do a search for EP010. That's the lesson number for this lesson. Or you could click this little link right here. That'll take you directly to the lesson page for this one. So again, guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. It was a lot of fun. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.